Hi, this is uh, Alex, Tigerskin, aka Dub Taylor. Uh, you're at my studio. And this is Till, Till von Zine. And uh, we will check out our track Dance, uh, released on Dark Crew Recordings. Dance. that like earlier last year it was kind of like an basically everything I listened to beatport whatsoever was going into a pretty much the same direction which was boring like hip-hop samples and then like weird bass lines on top which doesn't even fit to the sample so I thought okay wait plus everything super clean and polished Let's just do an EP, which is the total opposite, like dirty, raw, kind of classic house music. That's where we both match, like old house music. Yeah. That's what we usually do, you know, when we, when we um, start working on something new, like an EP, if, if we got a request, we just look what nobody is doing. Because it's, it's pretty boring if you just oh, do yeah. what everybody does. Yeah. So we actually look for something that we could do, that we both like, that nobody else does at the moment. This is the final version. When we start, of course, we have like plugins open and shit, and then I just cut it down to audio tracks in the end. I did the bass line with the, with the Mook plugin and um, bounced yeah. the audio file. That's how we started. It goes like this. Pretty much it. Is there any modulation or no? No, huh? Fuck modulation. Super yeah. simple. That's the bass line. Yeah, and then he came with the bass line and then uh, we just thought, let's just put 909s and 707s over it and distort everything. And we found this uh, sample I don't even know where, where we took it from. Some hip hop track, probably? <laughs> I don't know. I could tell, it's Rakim. Is it Rakim? Yeah. I don't remember. It was a folder I got no, from no, it's a friend. Rakim. And uh, nobody else and got a voice like him. Really? Yep. All right, I don't even know. <laughs> but he's the hip hop guy. Dance. So that's the vocal. Dance. Including Dance. clicks. Dance. And we just Dance. put it on the keyboard and just Transpose it a little bit and did some stupid stuff like that. I use uh, Contact pretty much. I use basically Native Instruments plugins when it comes to synthesizer samplers because uh, Reactor, for instance, is just you buy Reactor and you can load all sorts of stuff, reverb, synthesizers, whatever. You can build your own stuff or you just you know, get stuff from the library where everybody puts his stuff on for free. It's amazing. So you got everything there. Every sound, whatever you imagine, except good drums. I didn't find any good drums there. But anyway, um, what we also did was uh, when we recorded the bass drum, we had two bass drums, actually like a 707 kick thing that we just filtered. And uh, the 909, that's actually really noisy. You hear that? Nice. And uh, what we did was um, we used the Moga Foga ring modulator, I think, uh, for the distortion of the bass drum. That's in the break. There's some distortion in the bass drum where it takes off, you know. And uh, I just, because like in computers, there's not really good distortion. It doesn't sound warm. It doesn't, you know, it makes the stuff louder and kind of put some digital cracks on it, but it doesn't really distort. So we used the Moga focus, they sound really decent. And uh, yeah, and the rest was just drum computers. And yeah, we did the panoramas in the computers and put some effects on it. But it's basically like a little bit 707, a little bit 808 as well. And all mixed like 707 rims, then of course rides. 
and really dirty. We put a lot of distortion, analog distortion on the drums and the claps, like, you know, recorded two clap lines, one for the left side, one for the right side to have the stereo, but kind of weird stereo, you know, it's not really like, it's more like real uh, dances. And actually what we did to the cowbell, it's like a, was it a 707? No, it's an 808, right? 808, and we just put it through the ring mod modulator as well, and just like, whoop, whoop, tweaked it. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that track. <laughs> And also, also like because the, the the original drum machines we use the original drum machines. It's, it kind of you know they all like they're not really a hundred percent in the timing because back in the day, I had a couple of issues here with sync. You know, it, when I sync the drum computers, they would always go out of sync. So I used MIDI, and then with MIDI you have uh, like full velocity and everything on the drum computers because the original drum computers don't have that. And uh, so, yeah, it sounds pretty original, like 20-year-old whatever. But usually Is I give it? him, I give him like a, like a so, wow. you know, if we have this, this, this thing with uh, a track that's okay, but something is missing, some weird stuff, I usually just give him like a, the Moog Moog, uh, like an old Moog. And because it's really easy to use and you can't go wrong on it. So I give him the Moog and uh, he just tweaks whatever he feels like. And then we record it over the whole track. And we just put a side chain on it, done. <laughs> but for this track was pretty much only drum machines. And we sampled, was it D-Mob that we actually sampled for this thing in, uh, in, that's on the vocals in the end? I think it was D-Mob. Where was it? Where is it? I don't actually don't know in which, in which track I put it because here it is. What was that from? Dude, it's like one and a half years old. I don't even remember that one. Yeah, it's actually a loop that we took from some old track. It's basically oh, why? Yeah. just some toms or whatever that is. That's pretty cool. And then there's this. I think after the break, it went. sounds like D mod. We call it acid. <laughs> yeah. If I take the bass drum out, uh, the bass line out, it's already only drums, you know. And then, if you take the vocal off and the cobble, there's n not really much left except drums. So it's. It's very basic, but it's one of those tracks, like if you listen to old school Chicago House, there's usually just the bass line, one string on top and the vocal sample or something, and that's all there is. And all everything else they do or they did back then was just a question of arrangement. We just arranged things on top of each other. And that's what we did as well, I guess. The main part and then break. People like that. It's like the kind of part where you work on and do like all the freak shit. Actually, with this track, we didn't do that much. When we recorded the drums, we because I record everything into a mixer and then into the sound card, so I tweak it already in the mixer. Sometimes it's too much, and sometimes you have to, you know, find the right frequencies for four different hi hats. But um, in the end, we don't do that much when it's recorded. A little bit reverb, a little bit equalizing, not really much. 
because it's, I mean, the drum machine sounds good already. There's not much you need. Like for the bass drums, you need a little bit extra sub bass or like for the hi-hats, a little bit that whatever frequency that makes them shine. But apart from that, it's pretty much done. Well, just when I see it here, there's not much on it. There's not even much compression. And uh, I actually sent all the parts out of the computer and mix them externally again so I can actually if something is not right, I can just tweak it in the, at, the, at, the, at the back end here. It's just a TF Pro mixer that I got a couple of years ago for summing because there, back in the day there was not so many options. Now, there was the, the Neve summing amp and some, some little boxes that didn't look very promising. So I actually when I saw this, I called Ted and said, like, can you build this thing for me because that's like pretty much what I need. I work on a baseline at home and I think that, okay, wait, and then we can can work on a real 909 and not me programming with some samples I have at home. So this is like super exciting and to see what's happening when I turn those knobs and yeah. he shows me what's happening when he goes through that and this and blah, blah, and blah. And sometimes it's really, also really funny when, when he comes up, with, I want that, you know, I want a baseline that sounds like Mr. Fingers. And I say, I have the synthesizer with the preset that Mr. Fingers used for the baseline. So actually, you know, or like whatever, you know, like uh, when you have the originals, you also realize how easy things were done back then sometimes. You know, just had like two boxes and that was all they used. And they just used pre preset sounds and you think it's, wow, that sound is amazing. It's just a preset sound. This is, for instance, one of my favorite tools that I used since more than 10 years in pretty much every track. It's very simple. It's like a, like a basic synth, two envelopes, two oscillators, one LFO and a bunch of filters. It was built by a friend of mine. Like I requested, like I wanted a certain thing where I can play samples uh, that I can loop instead of having oscillators. So what I did or what I do here is um, instead of having proper oscillators, because digital os oscillators are kind of, you know, flat and digital, I don't want that. So I sampled the raw waveforms from oscillators from all sorts of analog synths like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, just the waveform in a loop. And then I just load it into it. And then you have it here. Can we hear it? Yeah. And a little bit louder. I'm gonna get the monophone. So you got the, the, the waveform is always looping. So whatever you do, it's still looping through the, the audio file. And uh, it sounds a little bit more live than a, than a digital equalizer. And then, yeah, you just filter it, do the same stuff that you would do. But I can, of course, also load a chord sample and play a one shot or whatever. So it's like the kind of dream synth I always wanted. If, it, I, if anybody would, would build this as, as hardware, I would probably buy it. And it, it got a little delay in there as well. Just a reactor ensemble, yeah. And I have lots of like personalized reactor stuff that I use. Like I sometimes use stuff from the library, but uh, not really that much. There's also some really weird stuff, like like little things. Like like for instance, I have this this little kind of reverb, fake reverb, we call it. It's pretty much a white noise that um, with an envelope follower. So actually, if you have a clap that sounds too old school, you just put this on top, put some noise into the clap, ex you know, extra, and then it sounds modern or whatever. So we do stuff like that. You plan like when it, when when to release that video or that? No, thing, no, 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 no that, that, that has something to do with my with my schedule in general. Because otherwise, that's, it yeah, be that's like what I'm a saying. Apart mass. from that, we don't plan anything. That's, that's the problem when you have so much to do. It's not like, okay, I wake up at eleven and I'm like, yo, what's happening today? That's uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I didn't want to address you with that. I think, um, I mean, we did a bunch of remixes which will be out within the next couple of weeks for some labels. You got a bunch of remixes we still need to work on mm. without me trying to plan now. Um, uh, 
constantly work on new stuff at home plus I'm about to finish my album right now my second one for so all um, and then yeah we just I mean he's doing stuff all the time I don't I think he doesn't even know what he's doing all the time I mean like most of the stuff gets never released because I'm not really satisfied with it but I you know we we, we have a little bit different tastes sometimes. So I do a lot of trancey stuff, and sometimes even that is too trancey for me when I'm finished. You know, when I do it, I like it a lot, and then I'm finished, and I'm like, oh, that's too positive, or that's too English, or whatever. You know, if you do that kind of English, yeah, like pop. <laughs> yeah, if if you do pop music nice. with a house beat, like you know, like but not uh, whatever the the stuff that everybody likes with some vocal sample or whatever, more like. U2 with a bass drum? Nobody Sounds likes like that. Sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I like that. I like, I, like, I like doing that, but I never release it. I'm not like that at all. Uh, he might be different because he... I never have this thing that I want to make something, you know, because I think it's better to release it under my name or whatever. We just, you know, when we work together on something, it's, it's going to be are both names. If I work on something myself, it's my thing. If you work, yeah, it's yeah, your yeah. Thing, that's it. I have no pressure in releasing music. That's um, if I do one solo EP a year or like an album every three years, I'm fine. I don't need to put out like a remix every eight weeks and uh, an EP on the biggest generic tech house label of the season every couple of weeks um yeah i yeah like for me it's, I'm, I'm a bit different there because of, i'm not a dj i quit djing 20 years ago or something because like you have to decide records back in the day records or gear both is expensive or so shoes shoes i had one pair of shoes for right. three years back then <laughs> No, I still have one pair. I have I have twenty, but I only wear one. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, of course, when you're not a DJ, you you know, you don't have that much much gigs except you're the hot shit. When you're really like at your peak, then of course, but things go up and down really fast nowadays. You know, 